One of the most well-known native nut-bearing trees in eastern North America is the black walnut, Juglans nigra. While this tree is most famous for the delicious nuts it produces, there is much more to the black walnut. It is a host plant for some super cool Lepidoptera, a food source for wildlife, and it produces a wide variety of edible and non-edible economically important products, one of which has a highly energetic use. Bet you weren't expecting that in a tree video. We'll cover the multiple uses for black walnut in a minute, but first let's discuss. The huge native range of black walnut, which encompasses most of the eastern U.S. and parts of southeastern Canada, and even west into the Great Plains. It isn't native to many of the New England states, but has been introduced there. While black walnut is a distinctive tree, it does resemble several other nut producing species. So let's learn how to identify black walnut in the field and throw in some super cool facts about this awesome tree along the way. Black walnut is a pioneer species, which means it prefers to grow in areas with reduced woody competition. Think of places like fallow fields, areas that have been disturbed with fire, openings in closed canopy forest created by wind and ice storms, or perhaps a logging operation, any place where there are no large trees creating shade. Black walnut grows quickly when young and will attain an average mature size of 50 to 75 feet tall with an equal spread. Mature trees can also have massive trunks that are over three feet in diameter. Under optimal conditions and with enough time, black walnut can grow much larger and there are records of trees over 100 feet tall. It often has a straight trunk that may extend 20 feet or more before spreading into a rounded open crown. The tall, straight, limbless trunk is perfect for lumber production and black walnut heartwood is prized by woodworkers for its dark color, grain, strength, and stability and is often the most expensive native hardwood lumber with exceptional logs that can be used for veneer selling for a huge premium. Natural wood veneer is a thin sheet of wood that is sliced from the log in one continuous strip. Think of sharpening a pencil only on a log size scale. These thin sheets of black walnut veneer are used to face plywood, giving it the look of the expensive hardwood at a much lower cost. Veneer grade black walnut is often the most monetarily valuable of our native eastern hardwoods. Now before you get the idea of retiring early by planting a bunch of black walnuts, you need to know it will take 30 to 50 years on average for a tree grown from seed to reach marketable size. And that is on an excellent site with perfect management. Most of the trees grown will sell at the saw log rate for lumber. Veneer logs are not common, hence the premium price is paid for them. It is probably best to plant and grow black walnut because you like it or you want to enjoy some of its ecological and culinary values beyond the monetary value of the wood it will produce. Speaking of growing black walnut, if you look around while you are out and about, you will likely notice black walnut growing just about everywhere. This is partially due to black walnut being highly adaptable to varying soil conditions. It prefers moist, well-drained, loam soils with high organic matter and acidic to neutral pH, and will express its best potential in these types of soil. However, black walnut can be found growing in less than optimum soil for it, although it will not reach the size or nut production it can achieve in more optimal conditions. It does not do well in areas that are constantly wet, but can handle occasional flooding. Due to its deep taproot, black walnut can handle drought conditions and dry soil well once established. The long taproot is something to keep in mind when planting black walnut as it can't be moved easily once planted, so be sure it is going into a spot where you will be happy with it for the next 100 years. Like many pioneer species, black walnut does best in full sun and can handle partial shade, but will not grow as quickly or produce as many nuts if somewhat shaded. Black walnut is shade intolerant and will not grow in heavily shaded locations. Black walnut leafs out later in the spring than most other tree species. The leaves of black walnut are pinnately compound, which means they are shaped like a feather, and large, from 12 to 24 inches long and four to six inches wide, and have from 11 to 23 leaflets. Even though black walnut has an odd number of leaflets per leaf, the terminal leaflet, the leaflet at the tip of the leaf, is often small, deformed, or missing entirely, so it is a good idea to look at several leaves when making an ID. The leaflets are up to three inches long and ovate to lanceolate in shape, which is plant nerd for they are wider at the base and taper to a point, and have finely toothed margins or edges. Leaflet color is yellowish green to green. Crushed leaves have a strong, distinctive smell of black walnuts. 
Fall color is in shades of yellow, but is generally not too spectacular, and the leaves drop quite early, making black walnut one of the first trees to be completely defoliated in the fall. The foliage of black walnuts is important to around 100 species of butterflies and moths that use it as a host plant. Most notably, the caterpillars of the regal moth, the huge and spiky hickory horned devil, the largest caterpillar in North America. Although it is called a hickory horned devil, its preferred host plant is the black walnut, and in the past, the regal moth was more commonly called the royal walnut moth. Another favorite giant silk moth, the ghostly, long-tailed, pale green colored luna moth, has caterpillars that also utilize black walnut as a host plant, as do the small green caterpillars of the awesome banded hair streak butterfly. Mammals tend to avoid walnut foliage, and it is fairly deer resistant. Although bucks will rub it with their antlers, so you may still need to cage younger trees to keep the deer from girdling them. If you love learning about our native trees and the awesome caterpillars that feed upon them, then think of that like button as some walnut foliage, channel your inner hickory horn devil, and go take a chomp out of it. The bark of the black walnut varies with the age of the tree. Young black walnut saplings will have brown to dark brown bark that has small vertical fissures and ridges forming, giving it a rough appearance. As black walnut matures, the bark darkens to dark gray or black, and the ridges become larger, rougher, and more pronounced, and may create a rough diamond pattern on the bark. This is a good place to mention that the black walnut can be tapped like maple trees to collect sap to boil down into syrup. Not a well-known use for the black walnut, but a tasty one. Black walnut twigs are brown to reddish brown, often with a coppery cast, and have scattered, round, white lenticels, those warty growths found on the bark of trees and shrubs. Older growth is smooth, new growth is covered with short, blonde-colored fuzz. A twig sliced lengthwise will reveal a hollow, chambered pith. The leaf scars are large and V-shaped, with a bud nested in the top of the V. There are three distinct bundle scars within the leaf scar, which are what leads some to say the leaf scar resembles a monkey face. Personally, I think it looks more like the face of the Arcona that pops its head up in the Mos Eisley Cantina in Star Wars Episode Four. Which brings up a question. What is your favorite Star Wars movie? Let us know down in the comments. I am super curious to know how this one plays out. Now, back to Black Walnut ID. Leaf and flower buds are rounded, brown, and covered with short tan fuzz. The terminal bud, the bud at the tip of the twig, is large, cone-shaped, has a blunt tip, brown, and covered with short tan fuzz. Black walnut blooms about the time its leaves are emerging, around April or May, with some slight variation depending on location. Black walnut is a monoecious species and produces both male and female flowers on the same tree. The male flowers are greenish, drooping catkins that are from two to four inches long and form along the length of the twigs. The female flowers are small with an obvious greenish ovary and feathery yellow to reddish stigmas that form in short spikes at the tips of the twigs. Overall, both the male and female flowers are not obvious and are often obscured by the emerging leaves. The flowers are wind pollinated, and while black walnuts are technically self-fertile, nut production will be at its best if cross-pollination with a different black walnut tree is possible. Even though the flowers do not produce nectar, many species of native bees, such as sweat bees and andrenid bees, do gather pollen from them. And now we get to the thing this tree is best known for, walnuts. The black walnut can start producing at an early age, as young as five or six years old, but won't produce large amounts of nuts until it is much older. There are several black walnut trees on our property that are under 10 years old, and all of them are producing a decent amount of nuts for their age. Black walnuts ripen and start to drop in late fall, around September and October, depending on location, and will continue to drop into the winter. The nuts are big, from one to three inches in diameter, most of which is a yellowish green outer husk. This husk is entire. It does not have obvious seams. It just surrounds the nut it contains, which is different than most North American nut species. The husk contains watery, dark juice, and that juice will stain anything it encounters a brownish yellow. More on this in a minute. Removing the green husk will reveal the actual nut, which is dark brown to black, roughly ping pong ball sized, and has a heavily furrowed surface. When removing the husk of black walnuts, you may notice some small white larvae in the husks. These are the larvae of the walnut husk maggot fly. 
They are very common and don't affect the edibility of the walnuts. Black walnuts must be cleaned and cured for the best taste and shelf longevity. This process is a bit outside the scope of this video, but I am going to link an extension pamphlet on how to do this if you want to collect black walnuts for the table. Something most people don't realize are the black walnuts you see for sale in stores come mainly from nuts collected from wild trees. Across much of the native range of the black walnut, there are buying stations where people can take the walnuts they collect and sell them. At the buying station, the whole walnuts are unloaded into this super cool and super loud machine that strips off the green outer husks, spits the walnuts into sacks, and the sacks are then weighed. The person that brought the nuts in is then paid per hundred weight of walnuts. Collecting and selling black walnuts is a common fall activity in many rural areas. If you want to give collecting black walnuts a try for your personal use or to take a load of them into a buying station, or maybe you just have an area you want to remove the walnuts from due to them being a walking hazard, there is a super slick tool that makes the process of gathering them faster, less backbreaking, and even kind of fun, a device called a nut wizard. It is basically a round cage on a stick that you roll over the ground and it captures the walnuts as you roll across them. Super quick and no bending over. They are a bit pricey, but the time and wear and tear on your back they save is worth it. I will put a link to this awesome tool in the description. This is an affiliate link, which simply means we get a small commission if you purchase the item. No extra cost to you. It's just something that we get from the seller, which goes to help support the channel. Because black walnuts are so hard to crack, there aren't many critters that can eat them. Gray squirrels, fox squirrels, and red squirrels can gnaw through the hard shells and are the most widespread wildlife consumers of black walnuts. Many bird species will also feed on the nut meats of black walnut after the hard shell has been breached by squirrels. The only other native mammal that routinely feeds on black walnuts is the black bear as they have enough jaw power to smash through the shells. Invasive feral hogs also have strong jaws and feed on black walnuts heavily. The value of black walnuts goes beyond them being a culinary treat for people and a fall food for wildlife. Both the soft outer husk and the hard shells have a myriad of household and industrial uses. A dye can be made from the husk which will stain cloth and fibers in shades of brown. Like this long hunter's frock coat I'm wearing, which was dyed with walnut husk collected right here in Kentucky. The dye can also be used to dye leather and was also used as a dye and protectant for rusted metal, like farm tools and especially for treating steel animal traps in days gone by. The hard shells are usually ground into grit or flour and may be used to texture paint, as a media and filtration systems, as grit in abrasive blasting, and in actual blasting as a filler and absorbent in some formulations of dynamite. As useful as black walnut is to pollinators, wildlife, and people, there are a few things you should be aware of with it. First, it is considered allelopathic. It produces a chemical known as juglone that may inhibit the growth of some plants. Now, when it comes to most native species that have been growing with black walnut for thousands of years and are adapted to it, this isn't much of an issue. But there are some species, both non-native and native, that are susceptible to juglone. Among these are peonies, tomatoes, some azaleas, apples, and some blueberries. Juglone is also toxic to livestock, especially horses, and even people where the most common reaction is skin irritation and rash from handling parts of the tree or the nut husks. Although it occurs in most parts of the black walnut tree, including the soft husk of the nut, the nut meats themselves are perfectly safe to eat when properly cured. Like many other toxic phytochemicals, juglone is being researched as a possible anti-cancer treatment with lab tests showing promising results. Another thing to be aware of is black walnut is susceptible to a thousand canker disease. This is a fungal disease, and like many fungal diseases of trees, thousand cankers affects the tree's ability to move nutrients and water throughout itself. Symptoms include yellowing and loss of leaves, branch dieback, and eventually the death of the tree. I haven't seen thousand cankers in my area of Kentucky yet, and I hope I never do, but it is something to keep in mind and to keep an eye out for. The last thing to keep in mind with black walnut is they can produce a huge amount of large, heavy walnuts that are gonna drop from the tree. You don't wanna plant a black walnut where the nuts are gonna fall on things you don't want hit, like your car, your house, outbuildings, 
pool, flower and vegetable gardens, and yourself as you access your house and property. Trust me, you do not want black walnuts falling on a metal garage roof. Ask me how I know. The black walnut is one of the most easily recognized and well-known nut producing trees in the eastern United States. And while it does provide food for pollinators and some species of wildlife, and is an important host plant, there is another eastern tree that produces hard mass that is eaten by an even larger variety of critters and birds, and is a host plant to a mind-boggling number of caterpillar species. That tree is the awesome white oak, Quercus alba. And you can learn all about it in this video, and be sure to take some time and enjoy nature in your backyard.